not enough parking here. For as much business as he's gonna get, there's not enough parking. You're gonna need three bucks. No, that's okay. So, what was your kind of idea for putting the camera right in the front, David? Like when you're looking at everything right here? I, you know, I want to be able to see everything going on and wherever it's going on. Plus, uh, it's easy for people looking in the front to see you know, that they're being recorded and everybody else can see they're being recorded and everything. So just a security measure to just let everybody know, you know, act right, don't misbehave. You're taking the right precautions as well and uh, you're at least letting people know that you, uh, you're you watching, you know. Yeah. Sometimes all the cameras are hidden in the back or whatever, so. Yeah, yeah. We want, we want everybody to know what's going on. And so, you know, good fences make good neighbors. That's right. <laughs> what's uh, what's the story on this little uh, bulletin board here? Uh, we try to keep it updated as best we can in this market, but uh, what we're doing is we just want people to kind of get a grasp of what we pay uh, compared to what we sell for. Yeah, so and, if uh, someone walked in with like a one ounce gold eagle, what would you pay them? Uh, right now we're paying 25 back on gold eagles. And then you're selling for about plus 80 over, which is... Yeah, about, about plus 80 over, yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah, these are some things I got recently. I, I mean, some sometimes you get some stuff that's just really hard to get. Just you just don't see a lot, and, and it's always uh, always fun to see that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the best fourteen D I've ever owned. So yeah, you owned it probably for a day or two, and then it was uh, <laughs> somebody wants it. I guarantee you, somebody yeah. always wants nice coins. What's the typical stuff that you normally run into at the shop? Just kind of you know the, we we uh, we. Tr buy and sell a lot of silver dollars and uh common common coins and slightly better coins and uh you know there's the um the indian head cent collector and the lincoln cent collector and they're either building their set or upgrading their set at all times and then the type collectors are always looking for something you know something a little bit different or something a little bit better right and of course in this market there's lots of people taking advantage of the high prices and selling gold and silver that they might have bought at a lower price and and of course uh there's always the, the stackers that are looking for a little bit more. So Yeah, what are some things that you just bought today? If someone was walking in the shop and they're like, what does a normal day look like for you guys? What did you buy? Uh, today we bought 90%. Uh, we bought some gold. Um, let's see, what else did we buy today? You bought some wheat scents? Maybe yeah, some, uh... I bought a bunch of wheat scents. We bought a lot of wheat scents. I think just about every shop has a plenty a plentiful stack of wheat scents somewhere. So yeah, their Home, Home Depot bucket yeah, somewhere. exactly. And... Um, uh, bought a couple of uh, Engelhard gold bars, and uh, those are, you know, see those every once in a while. That's kind of fun. And some other pre-33 gold, miscellaneous stuff. And Do you want to walk us a little bit around the shop and just show us, like, your inspiration behind what you did? Well, we, I like old documents and stuff, and I like to collect them. And people enjoy seeing the old handwriting and some of the prices from some of that stuff and, and everything. And so... Uh, I swap that kind of stuff out from time to time. And I can I see you have a couple little places where people can sit down and kind of go through coins, or you can have some little private time going over some stuff with people. And then down on the end, we keep a little bit of supplies down there. Yeah, you make it a little bit more personal, maybe down here if someone is yeah, a little personal, a little private, and everything. So you can pull them away from everybody else and what else is going on. Yeah, because right on maybe on the left side here, you can see it more of a buying or more of a selling side, I guess. Right. And then yeah. there's people down here that are more of a, you know, if you're going to acquire from the public rather than sell to the public, you know. Yeah. And sometimes uh, some of our customers, you know, if they're going to be here a little while, it's just more comfortable for them just to have a seat and just relax for a little bit, you know. Uh, if they have a few things, they might come in, set them on your counter, you can go through them and be done, but sometimes it takes a little while. So. Yeah. You have to sort through a lot of things. I thought I saw you guys sorting through some jewelry today. You know, you kind of was breaking it down right here and then... Uh, he was also showing you weed scents, so sometimes when it takes so long, it kind of has to be segued off into these more private yeah. parts, you know? Yeah, keep everybody's stuff separated from everybody else's and just, uh, yeah, just have these little workstations. It's not a big shop, but I really like it. It's comfortable for me, and, uh, you know, um, we have a good time here. We have a nice customer base. We've got 
good people come around. So, well, What would be a tip, I guess, if someone wanted to open a shop? What's one big thing that you didn't expect when you wanted to open a shop? Uh, you know, probably um, all the paperwork, you know, the regulations and the certificates and uh, getting lined up. That That's the stuff you just, I mean, you hear people talk about it, but you really, until you, I guess you start doing it all, that's what really kind of, you know, throws throws the cold water on it. But yeah, it's a different. It's part of the. It's part of it. You got to do the. You got to grind out some of the stuff to enjoy the part that you really like. So. Yeah, I guess it might be just different from the vest pocket game where it used to be just uh, you find somebody to show and you're able to work directly with them rather than yeah. running it through the city with all their extra stuff. Yeah, I mean, when I used to walk shows and do a lot of stuff like that, and I had uh, you know a lot of private customers and stuff. I mean, you're looking for certain things for certain people, or you're looking for you know, uh, what you consider the best bargain or whatever. So you selectively buy. Now you buy what comes in, what comes to you. So, you know, yeah. and you're just kind of, um, you're a little bit at the mercy of it because you're going to accumulate things. You know, you have to. And so, not stuff I would normally accumulate, but that's what you do because you provide a service. So you have to do those things. Yeah, you have to buy. Yeah. What are some, what are some things that we bought today, Dave? You want to show them, uh, I guess this is kind of just the grouping of, some stuff that you uh, were working on with a friend and oh yeah y'all got y'all y'all come in and uh we had a bunch of um a bunch of these little soapbox holders come in and everything and uh got all loaded up just uh yeah it turned into i think a good trip for you guys y'all just uh y'all made out with a little bit of inventory here probably keep y'all busy for a couple of days so as david said we kind of picked up a bunch of these soapbox holders from a friend of his and uh we were able to sit down price them all out pick them up and so uh some coins with annex holders are either undergraded or overgraded so you have to be very careful especially with capless halves it seems there was a few other coins that were overgraded or so severely clean that they shouldn't have deserved a grade at all and so we ended up passing on those but we ended up buying some large cents kind of hard to pick up on but nice chocolatey color to it uh, we ended up picking up some Indian head scents, a few with some decent character as well. Some barber halves, a little bit, not a better date, more of a common date there. Uh, some commems, some dollars. Ended up buying some uh, reeded edge cap bus halves. Just some neat, neat type coins. And so, if you guys want to check out all these that we ran into today, make sure to go on our website, acousticcollectibles.com, and uh, we'll have them priced up for you there. I was trying to find the coin that you were most most passionate about, but the 1806. Yeah, there, there was a couple of a couple of little little nice things in there. Nothing just uh, crazy good, but I mean it's just good little type coins, you know, half cents, bust, but couple of bust quarters and some bust halves. I mean, it's good stuff. Singles and doubles, you know. Yeah, yeah. What are uh, what's a crazy story you've heard recently? I guess uh, when you're working at the shop, is there something that just been caught? Oh, your... somebody found some error coin that you know. Somebody online said it was worth uh, all the money in the world, you know. And I, I did have a guy come in, and he's trying his best to find the 43 coppers. He's got nine of them somewhere in his house, and he's looking desperately to find them. I, sh I hope he does. But well, I was well, my my response would have been a little bit weird, but it'd be like, man, I have those two at my house. I'm still looking for them. <laughs> yeah, now, everybody's got one or two, but he had nine, so that was that was pretty pretty incredible. So yeah. Was well, there anything else you want to show us, maybe about the shop, David, that you'd be interested in? I uh, just, uh, you know, we just have a good time here. It's just uh, we try to try to do our best to help people out. We, uh, you know, we have boxes for coins for people to go through, buy and trade bullion. Uh, we chase better coins for for customers, selective things, and so. Uh, we yeah, so I could see you have a bunch of. I guess just a bunch of paper up here, and then you have raw, and then you have gold, and yeah. And so, what's kind of the thought process when people come in? Are they mainly looking for gold right now, or is that the? Yeah, we we're probably have more sellers coming in than buyers right now, and so uh, I do have a limited amount of space, and so the good thing is it changes, so it and so people get a kind of a a good kick out of that because they come in, they see one thing, they come back a couple, two, three weeks later, some different stuff out and everything, so. Uh, so that's kind of fun, but um, but the, as far as the buyers go, we've got you know we've got our regular people that buy certain things, looking for certain things, and and they're digging and everything, and uh, 
it's that undercurrent i guess if that makes sense yeah, yeah. so it's a it's a strange market right now but uh yeah. what would you describe i guess the scrap game like what what do most people pay for scrap and then what do you kind of pay for scrap if someone to bring it in just so because from what it sounded like when we talked about it it was super fair well, you know, we, we want to be somewhere in that 80%, 85% range is where we want to be, you know. And so, uh, depending on what it is and the condition of it and everything and stuff is what we try to be. We hear a lot of numbers and, you know, um, we, you know people come in and they're like, hey, I've already been offered a, you know, so-and-so price and everything. Well, let, let's just figure it out and see what it's going to be. And, uh, you know, I don't think I've had anybody to that had a previous offer that went after they heard my offer i don't think they went back to anybody else so well i think uh someone came in today and they hand you like one piece of scrap jewelry and you're like all right well what's your numbers <laughs> and you're like he's like what are you talking about you're like well what's your numbers you're like the other places you've been to he's like oh yeah yeah yeah. well i got this number and this number and then your number was higher than both of those so yeah so try to be real fair with everybody you know and uh you know and there's a lot of people that they they need to sell it you know and that's the that's the crazy part some people want to sell, the prices are up, that's all fine. Some people need to sell, so, you know, and it kind of help them out. Yeah, you just Do the best we can for them. want to provide that service. Yeah. Well, thanks, David. I appreciate it. All right. You bet. All right, David. Thanks all again. Right. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Be careful. Successful day. Make sure those... Yeah. Yes, sir. Can't complain. Now we drive home. All right, guys. So just wanted to show you some highlights. We just got home from David's shop, and there's a ton of great coins in here. A lot of them are common, so we put some on eBay, some on our website. But we hope you guys enjoy just the assortment of everything that we're showing you guys here today. First coin is this 1852 large cent, AU50. So this coin in particular, it really looks like... I mean, it looks like a 58 by today's standards or 55, minimal wear, and has some decent little purple color in the fields. Then we have this 1830 cap bust half, really nice color. As you can see, kind of just on the rim, good luster, good detail. And I'm a big fan of this coin for sure. Here is my favorites of the whole entire kit and caboodle, which is these Hawaiians. So this is a Hawaiian half here, this is a Hawaiian quarter, this is a Hawaiian dime. All, you know, mostly original. There's been some light cleaning on every single one of those coins, but that's just what's to be expected. Here's a cool Indian head set. We're going to move into some more copper here. Gorgeous purple and bluish toning to the coin. Incredible luster. And uh, another coin that I'm a big fan of. Then we have this 1806. Half cent, um, it's great VF30. So this coin, David was really excited about, liked it a lot, and uh, he let us pick it up. Not a lot of these older half cents in these soapbox holders, so it's cool to be able to offer it to you guys. Then we have this 1838 Coronet Head Large Cent, great XF40. Original, nice color to the coin, beautiful browns, great detail, and an affordable price also. Here is an 1851 braided head large scent. So this is you know one of the nicer ones that we've picked up. There's a ton of other ones that are just kind of VF, or there's some that are low balls, AG uh, threes, maybe good fours, something like that. But it has some nice chocolatey brown to this coin. And uh, yep. So a few dimes here to show you. This 1915 Barber dime, great AU55. Still some great remaining luster of the coin. Just a great type coin to have. A few cap bust dimes here. This one's from 1834. Has some color to it. We also have this 1836 with some color as well. And then we also have, which is probably the best one of the group, this XF40. Beautiful, crusty looking. Exactly how XF should come. Then we have some nice barber coinage here. This is a 1915S barber half, graded VF30. I'm sorry, VF20. Great little originality to it. And, you know, a lot of these are super affordable also. 
1902 Barber Half in VF30. Then we have a 1912D in VF20. A lot of these I felt were undergraded, but it's okay. We're just going to let them go as they are and let you guys pick them up. Then we have this 96L in Fine 12. Just cool coins to have, especially when they're so affordable and could start a nice set for you. Then we have this 1888 three cent nickel. It's a proof. It's very proof 64. Really sharp fields. A little kind of hazy toning to the coin, but that's okay. Then we have another great run of cap bust halves. We have a 37, another 37, and a 39. All with great detail. And some have some subtle color to them also. It's just you never know what you're going to run to at some of these shops. And it's great to be able to, I don't know, just get some variety for you guys as well. Because this is just a great assortment. We have this 1878S trade dollar in VG10. Not a coin you see often, especially on a holder. A lot of those are just sold raw, and so it's great. And so we have this 1835 Capos quarter, great VF20. And then we have some cool three cent silvers to end it out here. All with uh, you know a little bit of charm, a little bit of color. Hard to pick up on. You can still see that luster on the coin, which is great. They're all kind of toned in little ways. So some have some rainbow to it, some have some blue to it. Kind of like this 1858 in XF45. And here is this nice Civil War date, 1861, three cent silver. Cool mid-grade, cool holder. I hope you guys enjoyed this assortment. Just some of my favorites, many more to view on our website. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed all these soapbox holders, the interview with David, um, just all the videos that have been coming out recently, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins. Do you think they were cool? Did you love stuff like this? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. Subscribe. We're coming close to 8,000 subscribers. We want you guys to be a part. And so we will see you guys in the next video. It was great. It was great.